Hi, I'm Dr. Fragman from HSS. What you're about to see is a video of how to perform a retrograde precise intermedullary lengthening insertion procedure. This is primarily for patients and surgeons to see exactly how we do deformity correction and insert the precise internal lengthening nail into a femur through the knee joint. At the beginning of the technique, it's important to place a blocking screw. The blocking screw will help direct the reamer and the nail. This is to enable deformity correction to be done accurately. You can see that the blocking screw is first drilled and measured, and then the appropriate length screw is inserted. The screw is inserted into the precise spot that I planned in the preoperative planning. The next step is to place a half pin to help hold the distal fragment. A half pin will be placed both proximally and distally. The distal half pin needs to be posterior to the entry site for the IM nail. This is best done under fluoroscopy. Although in the video we are using power to insert the half pin, I recommend hand insertion in the operating room. The internal lengthening nail that I have planned for in this case is relatively short. The proximal half pin can be placed in the middle of the diaphysis, proximal to the end of the nail. This is different than the distal pin, which needed to be placed posterior to the path of the nail. An external fixator can then be assembled on the half pins connecting them. Alternatively, a femoral distractor could be used. The timing of placing this is up to the surgeon. This does help give some stability to the bone after osteotomy. The next step is to insert the guide wire precisely along the path that I want my reamer to follow. This is then over reamed with a drill or a solid reamer. The solid reamer is inserted to the site of the osteotomy. The next step is to make the drill holes for the osteotomy. The technique I use is a multiple drill hole and then followed by osteotome type of osteotomy. This is also known as a corticotomy. You can see that the entry site for the drill holes doesn't change and what changes is the direction of the drill. So multiple drill holes have been created. Then what I like to do is do a second independent drill hole in the same plane as the first, just posterior to it, to go through that thick posterior cortex of the femur. Once the drill holes are done, an osteotome is then used to actually break the femur through corticotomy. I start the osteotome in the same site that I inserted the drill and then move along anteriorly and posteriorly until the femur cracks.
The osteotome can then be used to separate the two bone fragments. At this point, the reduction is performed. The bone is then translated and angulated according to the preoperative plan. The external fixator is extremely helpful at this point to help hold that reduction during reaming. In order to ream, the ball tip guide wire is inserted. Sequential reaming is then performed, starting with the smallest end cutting reamer and then going up by one to half millimeter reamers. It's important that the reduction be held during the reaming as the IM nail will follow the path of the reamer. Once the reaming is completed, the IM nail is then inserted. The external fixator or femoral distractor is often maintained during this portion of the procedure. At times it can get in the way of the targeting device and that's why it was removed in this case. The locking screws are then placed in a standard fashion using the targeting device. The locking screws are smooth so they're pushed into place and then thread it in for the final few turns. The second locking screw is placed in the same fashion. The length of the screws can be measured off of the drill bit directly. Next step is proximal locking. This is done under fluoroscopy using perfect circle technique. The screw is pushed into place and then threaded in, exactly the same as the distal locking screws. You need at least two screws in the proximal locking. Don't forget these are captured screws, so they need to be unthreaded before removing the screwdriver. At this point, the nail is locked and final images are obtained the decision then needs to be made whether to add additional blocking screws. In this case, an additional blocking screw was thought to be necessary in the proximal fragment, and then that was added. This concludes our demonstration of the retrograde precise internal lengthening nail technique. As you can see, we've made effective use of the blocking screws. We've performed a full deformity correction exactly as planned based on our preoperative planning. And now we're safe to go ahead and distract. And even though we've done a correction and there's not perfect bone contact, the bone will grow and heal very well. Thank you.